Okay, I'm right back with another video. It's 6.31 a.m. And I think today, I think it is the 24th. I could be wrong. I don't remember. It's Monday morning anyway, and I'm on my way to work. And I'm chilly. It's cold. <laughs> Waiting for the heater to kick in, like all the heat to circulate throughout the car. So yesterday, you know, I had, um, last night, I had a little bit of a time falling asleep, but, um, then I made a video and they kind of talked about everything that was going on through my brain and then I, I, I seemed to um, drift off okay after that. Um, my mind was just full of, you know, putting the pieces together. I think, you know, when, you, when you've been dealt some an injustice like this, you um, your brain is constantly scrambling like, what the hell, like how, and it, it just will not shut off. And I think the reason why is because, you know, you never get proper closure. You never get proper closure um, uh, of the issue, you know, and so you're always like, my goodness, um, my purpose of the making the videos is not really to defend myself, the, the, the facts speak for themselves, I will say that, but it's not to defend myself, it's more to talk out my issues, to get it out of my head, and also, you know, because it, it is, it's, it's just therapeutic, it's extremely therapeutic, okay? And also, I, I do, um, not to defend myself to think that my situation is ever going to get better in, like, you know, I'm hoping that, oh, this is going to work. That's not it. My point is, is that I'm clearing my name. I, I, I didn't do anything, and I shouldn't have to suffer the consequences from the actions of other people, you know, and that's important, okay? So, it is not name clearing, but it's not because I'm, you know, hoping to, you know, gain anything by it. Um, other than, you know, I'd like to find another job eventually, and I know it's not going to be the same level of what I had before, but still, I mean, I should be able to have free mobility and to be able to move freely about without having to deal with these issues relating to my ex-family members coming in and, you know, muffling everything up and then thinking that they have the right to direct and whatever, all this other stuff. Um, they shouldn't be involved in my in my life at all, you know. So, you know, last night I, I did a video and I was talking about how, um, you know, how um, certain people feel as though they should, um, you know, invade people's spaces or, um, uh, you know, get involved with other people's life, you know, when, when you don't expect them to. And I know that this is a, a huge problem, okay? And I know that... Um, when you are someone like me, like, you know, in the past, you know, I've made, I've made over 900 videos. In fact, I might even be up at a thousand. I need to go count them all. Um, but anyway, you know, you, you, you state your case because, you know, I, I've been dealing with this issue or making, I've been making videos on this issue. Okay. Um, since 2015, September of 2015. Okay. So I've been talking for a very, very long time. And I know that, you know, my previous employers, you know, um, particularly my ex-boss in Chadsworth, um, have been seeing these videos. And so look how long it's taken people to understand that this is a crime, even though you've been it, mentioned it so many times. And um, the reason why is because this gets carried on as regular business practices. They don't really think about it. Like I said, you know, they, they don't understand that, you know, people have rights and that adults do not have to um, be directed by other adults. Like, you know, like my eldest, my ex-eldest sister and my ex-brother-in-law uh, came in without my permission and started talking to people that I was working with or like my ex-bosses or my bosses or whatever and kind of took control of the situation. Now, when we think about how often this happens, right, how often this happens because people are naive. Now, at first, I was, I have to say, I know that the town that I'm living in, it is a little backwards, okay? And I understand that, um, you know, there's been a lot of people who make comments about Bakersfield or whatever. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a decent town, meaning like, you know, there's, there's um, you know, adequate shopping and stuff like that. It's, a, it's, a, it's okay, okay? But I do know that, um, you know some things are a little archaic, like, you know, they don't seem to understand certain things, okay, that's not putting them down, okay, I'm not bitching too much about it, but my point is, is that, um, when, 
when I think about in terms of gang stalking, you know, at first I thought that this was an issue that was originated here in Bakersfield based on the racism issue. But when I think about it, I know that this issue originally started, or I, it wouldn't have started, I think, if my family wasn't involved in it. So I'm not blaming Bakersfield or the racism in Bakersfield entirely, okay? Because since this was something that occurred um, in this town and then also spread with other towns or whatever, um, it just goes to show you that there's a lot of people, okay, who are very ignorant to the fact that people are not subjugated to family members, okay, and, um, like, you know, I know there's target, targets in Hawaii, there's targets in, um, uh, Iowa, there's targets in, you know, Michigan, there's targets in Texas, they're all over the place, okay, and people tend to, I know people merge work and, and home life a lot, they do that a lot, you know, um, and there's really nothing wrong with it, especially, you know, um, hometowns or whatever because a lot of times like for example people in this town okay like um they may have been raised in this town and um they all went to school together and they might know each other's spouses and stuff like that and um they, they just they just think maybe like for example the husband comes into his wife's work all the time and then he talks to her boss and everything and um you know when she uh decides to leave for another job or whatever um things kind of, you know, it's just, it's very, I don't know, close-knit for certain people, okay, but no matter how close-knit it is, it's like, you know, these people, the husband and wife, are still separate people when it comes to employment, like, I know when people get divorced, um, there's usually a sharing of assets, okay, like, if you own your own home or whatever, um, but when it comes to employment, um, no, it, it doesn't. You're protected under the law. Your, your, your employment is, um, is, is is a different thing than something that you can take to court um, and argue over. You know what I mean? Um, I know some people, like, for example, um, some husbands and wives support each other. Like, you know, the husband might pay for the wife's college or vice versa. I knew a woman who paid for her husband's college. And you know what he ended up doing? He ended up leaving her for a younger woman. Oh, that must have hurt her. But, um, you know, it was like, you know, <laughs> what do you do? She didn't get anything out of it, you know, but it was his career, right? Um, but the money that they had in the bank, um, their home and all that stuff got divvied up through the, through the divorce proceedings. But his career that she financed, um, there was no issue to that. There, there, there was really, not, it was just one of those fucked up things where she was just like, you know, kind of screwed up or whatever. Um, so, uh, when I think of, um, uh, you know, and I never, I never had, you know, uh, my ex-husband pay for my schooling or anything like that, nothing like that, you know, um, so when I worked all these different jobs, I don't know who arranged them, I, I don't know, you know, um, but the thing is, is that, you know, I never asked for them to, but, it, but whatever the case is, my skill or my, my, my whatever were mine, you know, and so it kind of, and especially since I never asked anybody to arrange my job, it would be different, like, if, um, and it really wouldn't be different, really, but if I was to sit down, I sat down with my ex-husband and said, you know, can you help me find a job? And then he'd set me up with, like, you know, the job at the news station or something. Then it would be, like, um, I, it would still be wrong for him to sit there and think that, you know, that, that, that I could, that, that would determine where other, jo what other jobs I would get. It would still be wrong, but at least I would be aware of what this little plan was, you know what I mean? So, you know, and then when you defend yourself, or, you know, you, you speak up for yourself, I should say, when you speak up for yourself, you get a lot of people who want to denigrate you, um, mainly because these are jealous people. Like, for example, my ex-family, um, they know that they're in the wrong, so you get a lot of backlash from them, um, mainly, and I think it's part of, it's kind of a, 
falls under the category of the nervous response type thing, where they know that they made serious mistakes, and instead it, it, it's right, it goes right back down to the scapegoating thing. They know that they've made serious mistakes, they know they, that they're completely to blame, but and even though that they put a world of hurt on you, they will still turn around and continue to put a world of hurt on you in order to save face because they will never want to admit their guilt. This is why I'm telling you, when you deal with um, uh, perps or whatever, and how stupid it is for you to think that you're gonna ever make amends with these people because they are always going to find some way to uh, hurt you. You know what I mean? Um, so, like for example, the CPA who was barking at me, when he was dumb enough to listen to my sister Tanya. That was his fault, okay? But he had no problem throwing that back at my face, you know? So, um, so you know, that's why I feel as though, you know, people should be more careful about um, what's confidential, what's confidential, you know? And I know that, and I personally think the world is just so screwed up. It's like, you know, you might as well just throw your hands up in the air. And, I, and that's pretty much where I'm at at this point. But still, it's like, I'm showing where this issue starts, why it happens. You know, it happens because of that reason. And, you know, when I sit up at night, it's not that I'm bitching about a, a job. It's just the fact that I don't want to continuously be stuck in certain places. I don't I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? I would, I would never say, oh, or agree, you know, to, to something like that. Like, I want my, ab my ability to do what I need to do. You know what I mean? Like, if I wanted to move to, um, I don't know, anywhere, if I wanted to move anywhere, I should be able to have that ability to do that. You know what I mean? Without all this bullshit red tape in here. And then, you know, because my ex-sister Tanya, I don't, you know, I don't care about her. I don't care about any of those family. I really don't. Um, but what bothers me is that I, I see a different space in them. Like, I understand what they really are, you know what I mean, the kind of people that they are, and it's sickening, it, it is very sickening, you know, so anyway, yeah, you deal with a lot of that, you know, a lot of guilty people who will, will throw you under the bus and basically point the finger or try to point the finger at you for their own mistake, because they, that's what they'll do, you know, when you're a target. And it is unbelievable, it is unbelievable what you see in, in the behavior of other people. You know, um, all because they will don't be willing to save their reputation, but they're willing to throw yours under the bus. You know, I think the CPA realized, you know, now, finally, that this was a big mistake. It was a huge mistake. And what puzzles me so much about the CPA, right, is that he's not even an employer. He's not an employer at all. He's not even somebody that I even signed a contract with, okay? But he feels as though he had his right to throw his two cents in. You know? Which is like, wow, that, that really that really blows my mind. And I do know, and I will say that I didn't write him in a note saying that I appreciated him, you know, helping me find a job at one time. Because he did, okay? He did help me find a job. Which I was told by uh, um, a lady at the, um, what do you call it, the um, an employment agency. She said, you know, he, uh, he verified that, you know, you had a good job or whatever, which I thought was kind of weird that he would say that because I had been working in accounting long before that. But then I got, I got placed at a place uh, where, um, it was like a pharmaceutical type place. I'm not gonna say the name, okay. It was hard, but I was harassed out of that job by um, this last name, the woman, I think her last name was McKenzie. She was harassing me at the job right when I first got there. And well, when I first got there, it was, she was kind of snooty, but as time got on, it was like, you know, she was getting more and more snooty, right? And I noticed that the people in the, in the workplace were, you know, and I think this had something to do with the rumor mill that was starting at the time, okay? But I was completely innocent didn't do anything. Now these people, you know, it doesn't matter if you're innocent or whatever. But my point is, is that I had a job reference from the CPA and I was mobbed out of that job. Okay. Mobbed out of that job by Paula McKenzie. That's her name, Paula McKenzie. So, um, 
you know, I, I was just like, I was devastated after that. I was like, oh my God, you know. And then I had the, the ladies from the personnel company come in. Because these people were really brainwashed. They really thought that I did something wrong. They thought I did something wrong. I didn't do anything. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I will say that, um, you know, I, I my ex-family, I mean, I, I was thinking about the grief that they caused, you know, and the fact that, you know, there was some issues that happened when I had a, another car, okay, I just recently got this car a few months ago, okay, and before that, you know, there were, I was talking about how my son was paying my phone bill, um, he paid for some of the repairs in my car, you know what I mean, um, and then there were times where I would miss work, and then I'd be out of money or whatever, you know, in the beginning, it was, it was horrible, it was absolutely horrible, and then you've got these incompetent, Tanya and Jim Culligan sitting here, you know, and they have no problem with allowing my son to pick up the pieces, the pieces, you know, and I'm not the kind of person that likes anybody helping me. I really don't. I mean, I would rather literally like, I don't know, bend my elbow the other direction. I would do anything I could to prevent myself from asking anybody for anything. Okay. Um, mainly because, you know, I feel like my son's young. And I don't want to burden him. I don't. I don't ever like burdening anybody, right? Uh, but see, they don't care. Like I said, you know, they, they're willing to want to play the director and tell people what they're supposed to do. But when they create catastrophes, like what they did, right? And they dragged all these people's names in the, in the mud. And when, the reason why I mention these people's names is because... Um, they were all convinced that my family, my ex-family was right. And I needed the pain to stop. I needed to stop suffering for something that I didn't do. I was, I was literally taking all of this, you know, um, you know, like I, I was, it was beating down so hard on me because I was being blamed and, and treated, you know, in a completely unfair manner. And I needed it to stop. It was like, this is too much. Why are you doing this to me? I didn't do anything, you know? All of it, it's all their fault, right? All of it, 100%. So that's why I started naming names because I want people to wake up. Listen to what I'm telling you, okay? Um, these people had no right to do what they did. And um, some people might say, well, you know, you you're keep going on and on and on about it because I want to make sure my name is clear. I want to make sure my name is clear. I'm so sick and tired of worrying about, you know, and I know, I know I will probably never work another job, you know, as like the other ones. I, I get that, okay? But I deserve to have my mobility. I deserve to find at least another job on my own and not have to worry about that shit anymore. You know what I mean? Because I didn't do anything. Who, what happens to the people who, who did this? Who created this problem? You know, they should be the ones who are worried about their future, but they don't. They don't have to worry about that. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. You know? And, like, you know, all because, you know, somebody disagrees with something and then somebody, a rumors get started by the same people. Like my ex sister Tanya, she was probably speculating that I was doing something. And whether I was doing something or not, doesn't that occur to her? It's none of her business. And I wasn't even doing anything, you know? So, you know, you, you, you wonder, it's like, when are these people going to get theirs? They deserve to be thrown out in the street with nothing, with no fucking help at all, you know? And I feel very, very pissed off about it, you know? Um, so, oh, uh, I just went over the railroad track. So anyway, you know, um, I, I make videos and I talk about what's bothering me because, because, um, you know, I, I, I'm dealing with abusive people. Like, my, my family, my ex-family is very abusive. They're very abusive. They lack empathy. And I know that my brother, um, Rashawn, was like that. I remember one time when we were younger, he, like I told you, he's a sick pervert. He's sick. He's twisted off. He um, was barring my, tried to bar my arm with a snake knife. It was a knife that we had in the house. It was like, I had a shape, uh, shape of a face, the face, shape of a snake on the knife, okay? And I remember, you know, he was kind of twisted off. And I thought he was just, we were just kids or whatever. No, the dude's, he's twisted, okay? And I don't appreciate the shit that he's caused me. I really don't, you know? Um, and then turning around like, you know, this is my fault. It's not, it's bullshit. Like, it's bullshit. When women deserve to be protected from um, these sort of crimes, and then they end up getting more persecuted. 
you know what I mean? It's, it's absolutely out of my mind. I mean, just absolutely. It's hard for me to even, like, wrap my brain around it, you know? Um, I know that I'm the kind of person that is very peaceful, you know? I go, I go to work, I come home. That's the, pretty much the extent of my day. I don't do anything, um, you know? And I did, I did mention that I've noticed the same time exit and entry um, that has been occurring in my, my, my resident, my, my neighborhood, I guess, um, which I did mention it. I did mention it. The reason why I mentioned it is because I'm not telling people saying that people can't leave their house or get out of the house when they need to, or if they just so happen to open the door when I do that or whatever. But you know, when you are gang stalked, there's a certain thing that's quite obvious that happens, you know? And, um, and I, and I had mentioned that these sort of investigations are illegal. And this is what people don't understand. I know certain managers, um, think that these sort of things are like not necessarily like your family's even involved some managers are just really um kind of like terrorists you know they, they 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 get this position and they kind of abuse that you know and they they want to do things that goes you know that breaks a lot of law and they think in their mind just like my um, ex-sister who thinks because she has a bachelor's degree that that gives her entitlement to do you know, whatever she wants, right? Some people think, well, I have this management position and I have this particular employee that I don't particularly like and I can do whatever I want. I'm the boss. In their mind, I'm the boss. I'm the boss. I can do, I can do whatever I want. And that's a misuse of power, you know? And there's so much abuse that goes on in the workplace because of that, you know? And so that's why I was saying, you know, that personality tests in the workplace for management positions is not necessarily a bad idea. If you can detect if they have this sort of narcissistic trait to where they're going to create that tyranny in the workplace. Is there some way that you can identify that? Now, the more I think about it, it's like, you know what, it's hard to determine because when people are in a mobbing situation, even so-called nice people become fucking evil. And the reason why is because, it, you know, when people can get away with stuff, they really just do whatever they want. They'll do whatever they want, you know, and say and do whatever they want. So, um, I'm not sure, you know what I mean? I'm not sure, but it should be monitored. Their, their interactions with employees should be monitored and it should be where like employees have the ability to provide feedback on the interactions with their managers, you know, um, not necessarily over each and every little thing. Cause you know, there, people have disagreements, you know what I mean? Like you might leave some paper on a, um, on a photocopy, you know, on the on the copy or whatever, and people, are, you know, are, might get a little upset about certain things, just small things, and the regular stuff that happens. But when you feel as though people are using tactics to gang up on you, to create division within the workplace, where you know sometimes the manager might bully an employee, um, and then try to get um, supporters in in, the, in on this, that kind of stuff. Um, that's sort of division that gets created. And that toxic environment. Anybody who's going to create a toxic environment really should be um, uh, reported, and they should be have they should have feedback on particular managers and and, and, and see you know whether or not um, uh, these people have the correct people skills. Okay, and like some people get angry if you ask them anything. Like if you 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 you. you uh, interrupt them or whatever and they start snapping out that's, that's not somebody who should be in that position okay because managers should be in the position to help and aid and, and make things move smoother you know instead of creating all kinds of division you know and I've seen a lot of autocratic type managers selfish um, people who just want to exert their power and that's it they want to exert power and, and nothing else you know what I mean and they mistreat people and they abuse the system, you know what I mean? I've heard sometimes, you know, even when I've worked in certain companies, you know, if they terminated a person, you'll never work in this industry again, or the other person like, hey, you know, I'm gonna, I'm fine, I'll leave it, I'm gonna go find another job. And I remember one manager said, no, you're not, and he started um, making phone calls, all right? I remember that. And I also remember some guy who had an issue, and he had every right to have an issue with this particular manager, because this manager wasn't doing his job right, right? So. The, the, the guy was looking for another job and he put on his um, application that they, that they can contact his, his, his current employer, right? Well, his current employer wanted to give him a bad reference, all right? And the way he was talking to this guy on the phone um, was kind of like, you know, he was sabotaging the guy. He was talking about this guy 
not what he did on the, on, the, on the job, but he was talking about his personal life, okay? And then, after he got off the phone, he started bragging about how he thrashed this guy and yet good luck to him to find another job. Okay, you get this God type mentality that goes on with certain people in positions of power and it's not their right. Like, you know, there's certain guidelines that you have to follow legally in order to give a reference for job, you know, for your job. Like basically you want to keep it down to the minimal. You don't want to sit here and talk about, you know, oh this guy, you know, he on the weekends, you know, he's got a, a, another part-time job and, and you know he keeps his he keeps a bunch of lawn gnomes out in his thing and just stuff like that. You don't need to die you, that, when you talk about people's personal lives, okay? That's that goes on the board that kind of borderlines on slander or libel or whatever. And you want to be careful about that. Okay, you basically want to talk about the functions that they did at the job. And are they going to be eligible for rehire? That's it. Okay, you don't talk about, you know, he had a, uh, he got his girlfriend pregnant and he didn't, those aren't even things that you're supposed to even be bringing up. Because they're, they're issues that relate to discriminatory practices, okay? But still, um, you know, you got these people who want to play God. You know what I mean? And that's uh, that's my biggest issue about the workplace, is that people don't have, it, it's not a good work system. It's not a good system, okay? Um, the way the laws are written, and I am, I'm a great person. I mean, a person who um, has a very great respect for the law. And not just like employment law, but the laws, you know, that govern our state and our country. Okay? They are written, I'm not saying nothing's perfect, okay? But... They are very well written because they cover just about every single situation that um, is based on everyday living, okay? Things that uh, can occur, that will occur, it covers it wonderfully, right? But the thing is, is that most people don't have an understanding of the law, and when they do, they don't recognize when certain issues should be applied. You know, let me go grab the mail really quick. Alright, so anyway, um, let me put the seatbelt on, even though it's a short distance, if I don't put it on, it's going to be with this high-pitched noise, and it's just really annoying. Okay, so anyway, my was my, my, my biggest issue about, um, you know, employment and, um, you know, the, the tyranny that goes on, you know, and it's unfortunate because, you know, there's a lot of people who, uh, who are really good good workers I know the workplace is not about good workers okay I know it's not and I know it's, it's about you know a lot of game playing and you know um, and what do you call it status or whatever I, I know that it is and it's sad too and it's sad so you know I um, I had mentioned that um, on a video a few days ago and then yesterday I was looking for my yacht. It was the Yahoo or Outlook. I don't remember. But anyway, um, it was like this this thing. I, I did not read the article, okay? But it was basically um, kind of going along with what I was saying about um, do not teach your try not what do not teach your children to be successful. I didn't read the article, but I think it was. Pro I bet you anything, it was probably very similar to what I was saying. It's like because we we like to encourage people. To enormous amounts of money and time um, building these these particular skills and the reality of it is is that people get jobs not based on what they know it's who they know you know this proves it it proves a lot so anyway I'm gonna wrap up this video I'm almost at my destination this is Monday morning I'm not in a bad mood today I'm just kind of I'm just bored like extremely bored and burnt out that's my feeling right now um, I'll get the day over with and then I'll head home, take care of some stuff, and get on with my day. Have a wonderful day. Take care.